Allison Lewis, a prayer warrior. I, I could not have anybody else that I know sitting in the seat for this conversation. It is, it is really a blessing to have you and the church won't be the church without people like you. I just know that everything that's come against your generation and even the younger ones, um, the devil's overplayed his hand. God has raised you guys up for such a time as this. Mm. And he's giving and he's gonna release the keys and the strategies as you guys gather in prayer and seek him. Mm. When yeah. we can focus on Jesus and unite in him, yeah. that's gonna transform the world. Mm -hmm. uh, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the In The Fire podcast. I appreciate you guys tuning in, whether you're listening on Spotify, iTunes, or watching us on YouTube. We love you. Welcome back to the show. And if it is your first time here, if you feel blessed by this, don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment, all that beautiful stuff. But today, I have a very special guest. I consider you a prayer warrior. I, I could not have anybody else that I know sitting in the seat for this conversation. It is a blessing to have you here. So thank you, Allison, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, so this is this is actually really interesting to me because um, I was kind of, rest, not wrestling, but having a conversation with God about this. A lot of times we see uh, the front row of the church, like the pastors and everybody that preaches and everybody that kind of does the front line of things. Mm -hmm. But a lot of times we don't get to honor and really hear from people like you that are the strong, almost back end of the church that are just in deep prayer for our church, for our communities, for our families, for the pastors. Like it is, it is really a blessing to have you in the church won't be the church without people like you and so i i really bless that and, and honor that um and uh, i thank god for presenting me to you <laughs> but today we i really want to dive deep in prayer Amen. um i think it is an absolute fundamental part of our faith and our journey with christ and um i know that a lot of us young adults and and young women and men of god and maybe not even young like just pretty much any age really crave and desire a strong prayer life because we know how important it is but we struggle to develop that mm. and i think right now god is calling a lot of us to really uh strengthen those prayer skills and just really develop strong prayer warriors for our families for our church for our communities um and i know like for anybody out there that one day wants to have a family prayer is like an absolute fundamental for that Absolutely. or if you want to have a ministry if you want to have a business anything like that and you really want it to be god-centered prayer is huge and so i think it's really important for us to learn how do we pray what should we pray for? When should we be praying? All, all the really, they sound like simple questions, but it's something that really is important for us to know. So I wanna, uh, before we dive deep into all those questions, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, who are you? What kind of part do you take in ministry? All that beautiful yeah, stuff. Yeah. So. Um, my name is Allison Lewis. I am a wife and a mother. Uh, we just celebrated our, with my husband Ryan 20 years. Congratulations. That's yes, awesome. Yes, 20 is, years. Marriage is hard. So we. I are, love Ryan. <laughs> I love Ryan. He's a good man. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I have a, a 17 year old daughter and yeah. a 14 year old son. And I became a Christian when I was 18. 18. So I had actually just graduated from high school. I was raised Roman Catholic. Mm. Um, did all the, the things and always had lots of questions and, um, you know, God bless those parents who were teaching CCD and mm. other things. They didn't have answers for me. And, um, you know, like, why is Good Friday good? Jesus died. You know, like, I had all these, like. <laughs> Such a simple question, but yeah, it really but is a stumper. <laughs> yeah, you know. And I, so I, yeah. I have a sweet, soft spot for kids with lots of questions yeah. because I had them. And um, long story short, my best friend, uh, she started bringing me, uh, inviting me to youth group in high school. Nice. And I started getting exposed to, you know, born again Christianity and all that stuff. And I had all these questions because I was reading the Bible for the first time. And I would see what the Bible said, but mm. our traditions were not always lining up. So I was on this journey, went away to college, to the University of Delaware. 
and um you know everyone's like, oh party school right but mm. that fall is when i met jesus and so right before you even started like or like literally right the, the first month oh my gosh yeah and i it, it's i mean like only god can do this stuff. yeah i had a roommate that was protestant cool one that was catholic and we just had all these conversations and i was trying to really figure out mm. what is truth right and so i it's funny my my friend now we laugh but i sent her this loaded email with all these questions about you know the bible and and her faith and i mm. said listen now now as a christian i laugh because i'm like oh my gosh it god was definitely leading me to do this because yeah. i never would have like in my own i would never have said this but yeah. i said to her sarah i want you to answer these questions and you can't ask your mom because <laughs> she's strong and you can't ask your youth pastor i want to know what you believe okay. so she sent me back i mean it took her like a solid she was at a christian college and it took her a solid day, to, and she took me through Romans. You don't, you don't think she cheated? Asked her mom maybe. I don't. Faster. I don't think so because she's pretty. She's pretty. She would confess. She okay. can't. Like, okay. I can read her face. Gotcha. Yeah, but uh, that's. I'm gonna have to ask her next time I talk to her. <laughs> hey, back then, 27 years ago, <laughs> did you cheat? <laughs> did you uphold uh -huh. the, the laws? That's so funny. That's a good question, Daniel. Yeah. Um, but she took me through Romans, and she and she kept apologizing. Oh, I'm so sorry for all this scripture. And I was soaking and eating it up hmm. because I had never heard all of this in um, scripture answering my questions. Hmm. And I read through the email, and I was like, oh, my gosh, I need Jesus. Like, I am separated from it. And it wasn't like I had this, like, dramatic prayer. I just basically, like, I need you. Like, mm. I am separated from you. And then I was like, okay, I got to get a Bible, and now I need to read it. And wow. I just read the New Testament over and over and I stopped going out. Hmm. I didn't do any partying or anything like that. And I just, I'm like, I have to know. Now it's funny. I'm like, I have to know what's in this book and I have to know him. Wow. And so I, you know, that was my quest. Hmm. Now, interesting point. Not long after that, I started not feeling well. And now hindsight's, you know, and a lot of wisdom later. Right. A lot of it was spiritual attack. Wow. So I got attacked, um, and it, it was also a perfect storm. There was a very uh, physical part, emotional part, mm -hmm. but there was a huge spiritual part. And I came home from college, you know, you hear the, you gain the freshman 15 or whatever. I had come home and I was about 100 pounds. I had lost about 20 pounds. Oh my goodness. Go through all the, you know, um, diagnose, rule out all the physical. And they said, no, you have major depression. You need to take medicine. You mm -hmm. need to go to therapy. And I was like, okay, um, you know, I need help. I was, I couldn't function. And every time I tried oh. to go to church when I came home on Sundays, I'd get violently ill, violently throwing up. I mean, violently. And the church I was at wasn't really equipped with the things of the spirit. Hmm. And didn't really know what to do and how to battle that. But it was obvious, like, part of this was spiritual. Wow. So, thankfully, someone in that church gave me, gave my best friend's mom the book Bondage Breaker and was like, hey, and Victory Over Darkness by Neil T. Anderson. And it's just about your identity in Christ and how to fight the demonic fight. And that was the first, other than the Bible, that was the first Christian books I read. And mm. I just learned Spiritual Warfare 101. It was crazy. Wow. I would be in my, sometimes I'd be in my room at night and I, you know, I'd be reading my Bible and I, I mean, I did have trouble sleeping and the medicine yeah. finally did regulate that. But um, I would, I found a script, a channel that had just scriptures and music, pretty pictures and music. And, and I had that on all night in my room, hmm. you know, cause I'm 19 at this point. And um, did your, did your parents have any influence over your coming to Christ or? <laughs> Well, no. I mean, they my they are Catholic. Uh, my mom was Catholic. Oh, gotcha. um, now they're both born again. My dad is cool. with the Lord now, which I'm sure will, part of that story will come up because it's a testimony of yeah. and fruit of prayer. But they didn't understand, and I was naive and excited. I'm like, oh my gosh, no one probably told them what Sarah shared with me, mm. and if I just share this with them, clearly they're gonna get it. <laughs> okay, that's faith. <laughs> And that's not what happened. Yeah. It led to a lot of turmoil, and mm. I, I did a lot of damage in my zeal. And it, was, it mm. wasn't it was meant out of, you know, I wasn't trying to be uh, 
cause a conflict unnecessarily. I was not trying to be dishonoring, but it rustled feathers because my conversion was very, like I was night and day a different person. So when, mm. it, when their daughter comes home from school, now I'm sick and I have all these different views. I mean, we'd be sitting at the table mm. talking politics and I'd be sharing now because I'm a new creation and right. I have totally new views. And I was totally different from what normally I would be saying. So, oh, so, so you think they, they may have connected like you feeling sick and depressed with your conversion. It's like, I right, clearly, oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm like talking and I'm like, no, life, you can't just abort mm. a baby. Like that's a life, that's murder. Right. And they're like, yeah, but it's a woman's way, you know, and we're having these debates right. and I'm like pausing as I'm talking because I'm like, who is talking? <laughs> because it was so, yeah. and like I recognized here I am in a familiar setting with yeah. my parents having discussions we've had and I am completely a different person with a different perspective and I'm coming at this from a whole different angle. Hmm. And it was a little disconcerting. I mean, it was good, but it, it had its challenges and struggles. Yeah. And I think that's why I had to cling to prayer so early. Right. It's not because I had this, you know, like I'm some super Christian. I was desperate. Hmm. I was alone, I was sick, and no one really had a whole lot of answers. Hmm. So where did I have to go? God, right? Well, it, it's always really, just mind blowing to me how God will use some like an attack from the enemy, right? So the enemy is like, okay, you know, let's inflict depression and all this, and like let's cause conflict in her family. Like he's he's probably thinking he's doing a great job at destroying your family, and God the whole time is just like preparing something great, something. You I mean you said that your your father accepted Christ and. So clearly there was a God ending to that story in the midst of the enemy trying to attack and trying to inflict some damage. So that's, that's beautiful. That's insane. I'm telling you, yeah. God is amazing. Wow. Wow. And so you said that you cling to prayer mm -hmm. um, because of this moment of loneliness and, and depression that you were going through. And so how, like what, where does the story continue there? How did you get out of that? Yeah, so thankfully I had a pastor um, who was recognized what was going on from a, another church but that mm. was local. And he, I guess he saw some potential in me and said, hey, let me, while you're gone. So I went, instead of going back to Delaware, I, I went locally to Ramapo College for mm. two years, part-time. Because I didn't want to stop because I was afraid that I wouldn't keep going. And I, I like learning, but I couldn't handle a full load. So the pastor discipled me and um, encouraged me um, you know, in my spiritual walk and then had me facilitate some of the young adults. Cool. And I'm like, I'm a new Christian. I can't do this. And he's like, no, no, no. We're going to prepare. Hmm. I'm going to teach you. We're going to go over it. I said, no, but they've been, they've been in church all their lives. Like, and he's like, no, you, you got this. Like it's once one wow. Tuesday a, a month and we're going to, and that's what he did. So I had people pouring into me and him and his family, um, you know, because I did have thoughts when I would be driving. I mean, this attack was serious. I'd be driving and the, I'd hear voices saying, go drive into that tree. Oh my go drive into that telephone pole. And I knew I didn't want to die. Mm. I just found new life in Christ. That's insane. But the battle was real. So I had people that if the battle ever felt too much to call and they'd pray with me and they would, you know, mm. that I was never alone. Um, so I had a lot of support between my best friend, her family. Um, I mean, my parents were very supportive, but they were limited because they didn't have the spiritual. Mm. So all that to say is I ended up then transferring to Nyack College. Mm. And that's where um, I just, I, I just, uh, I could have like, so I got better. It took a couple years. I, like I said, I was part time for two years at Rampo. Mm -hmm. And I, by the time I was better, and um, right around this time is when Ryan and I met doing youth ministry. So I, Ryan and I have always worked with youth and children, just volunteers. Mm. And um, we kind of noticed each other. We were friends for a really long time. And then I went to Nyack. And that's when, when, we, when he, dro he helped my family drop me off. And we had like the define the relationship talk. And I was like, <laughs> you know, because I hadn't really dated as a Christian. Sure. And I was like, listen, like, I'm not messing around. Like, and, you know, like, we both wanted to be mm -hmm. like, listen, at any point, we'll try this. But if at any point we realize that like we're not marriage material, like we're just gonna be friends because sure. like we were really serious both about 
building a Christian family. Sure. Because his mom was a Christian growing up, but his dad was not, and we're still praying for. Mm. So, um, so I went to Nyack. I mean, I just loved eating it up. All the Christian, you know, and my my major was um, interdis Bible and psychology. Mm. And then I felt led to go on for a master's. And, you know, all my professors tried to steer me to like, you know, really big name schools. And I just didn't feel like I was supposed to go there. I felt like I was supposed to stay local because I felt the Lord was doing something in our family. And I didn't want to like not be there for it. And I thought it was, you know, just part of his will to stay local. So Mm -hmm. I went to Alliance Theological Seminary um, and... and was all sorry. No. F- was all this education that you were trying to get simply for your hunger for God and for education, or were you pursuing something beyond that, like a career, ministry, pastor, whatever? Yeah, I think um, I I knew I was. So I I didn't tell you this story, and I think you might like it. But when I was in Delaware, right before I came home, I was I was starting to feel not well. Yeah. I was at, um, I needed extra credit in a class. So we all went to the speaker and if you went and whatever, you could get extra credit. So we got there really early cause we're freshmen and we didn't really know where we were going and all that stuff. And there's, we got there so early, there's no one there. And they, my friends dared me to go up to the podium. And I said, there's no one here. Like, it's not like I'm being disrespectful, you know? So I went up there and I, I, I mean, it was like a 10 stair podium. Okay. So I got up there and I, just kind of was like, you know, it's no big deal, guys. And it wasn't the audible voice of God, but it was so audible, I responded. It felt so audible, I responded out loud, okay? And so I'm here just with friends goofing around trying mm-hmm. to, like, get extra credit. I am not thinking anything spiritual. I mean, it's a psychology thing. Mm-hmm. And I hear... Like I said, it's, I responded audibly, but I hear you will speak for me. And I'm like, what? And I said out loud. So no one else heard it. You know, my friends are sitting in the Mm -hmm. thing chuckling. They're like, what are you doing? And then I just, I was like, it was so overwhelming. I just walked down and I didn't even say what I, what, what happened. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have understanding my or a framework for what that even meant for much, you know, till much later. And I don't completely understand it. So I felt like there, he was calling me into, um, when I was then switching majors, mm-hmm. I had gone for physical therapy and physical needs. And the Holy Spirit, again, during a quiet time in my little tiny dorm room, said, I'm calling you to help people with their spiritual needs, not your physical needs. <laughs> what are you talking about? So, so God and the Holy Spirit it just speaks to you just like that guiding your steps in moments where you're about to go down a different path i mean you're literally you just described the verse of like you taking the steps and him just guiding you you're like all right well i'm just gonna do this and god's like uh close enough but spiritual not physical cool i'll just go into that now (laughs) it's so crazy i'm telling you i'm in awe because now i'm 46 so i can look back to see how that he was weaving things i have a little perspective now um but yeah it's i mean if i didn't live it i would be like that's crazy but it's just it's just how he's worked in my life so that's why i say i i knew i was called to spiritual yeah um but i didn't know how and whatever or what and i just knew i loved people i loved the lord and i wanted them to know him like i did Hmm. and i wanted to know him more because i saw people obviously all around me who mm. knew him more intimately i'm like mm. okay if they have that i want that you know how it looks for me yeah most importantly what did ryan say with that conversation <laughs> he with the, the finding relationship conversation no, he what totally, did he say he totally was for it and he, he agreed. <laughs> of course he was <laughs> he's like yeah he was waiting for that moment he was waiting i know yeah, he was he is a ro- he is a romantic guy he's uh, a very good man i'm gotcha. very blessed so yeah that's awesome so um just quick yeah how long did you guys date for and then when when did you guys get married so we ended up again this is it it all inter it's all interwoven and it all weaves together we ended up dating two years before we got engaged gotcha 
um, we got engaged and we're planning to get married the following year. But I actually, during grad school, I actually had another bout with depression. Mm. Um, that was not so much spiritual. Um, that was still, still like the Lord was healing wounds from mm. the past and stuff. And the vigor of, um, you know, graduate school and I was working part time and actually, um, you know, Ryan's very open about this, but he has dyslexia. And so I was helping him through college. Um, and it was just, it was too, it was too much a load. So mm. in, instead of pushing to get married and not enjoying the process, we delayed. So we were actually engaged two years um, before we married. So by the time we got married, we had been together five years. Mm. And his youngest sister was the one that kind of directed us. She was one of the youth mm -hmm. on the youth uh, on a youth trip that I, I um, helped lead. And uh, she said, hey, what about my brother? I'm like, he's like everyone's big brother. Like, I didn't see him that way. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know that for a year she was saying to Ryan, hey, what about Allison? He's like, no. <laughs> She's like everyone's gotcha. friend, you know? Yeah. And it, was, it took a, a solid year that the Lord then opened our eyes to see each other differently. Cool. But we're the best of friends. Wow. Yeah. That's beautiful. And so let's continue on your prayer journey. Mm-hmm. How did you end up? I mean, I, I heard you. Um, I heard you speak the other day. You spoke at a, a spiritual, like a a deliverance class that we were having. That was actually the first time that I heard you speak. And you can ask my girlfriend. I was geeking out <laughs> in my seat. Like I was just sitting there. I was like, it's just a normal class. Like, I, I'm listening. You just drop a gem, and I'm like, she sees me grab my phone, and I'm running it down. She's like, what are you doing? Well, I'm just taking notes. Cool. <laughs> I put my phone down. The second I put it down, you just drop another gem. Like, it's a real gem. And I'm like, what is she doing? And I grab like another notes and she's cracking up because I literally cannot drop my phone because everything you were saying was just so powerful. Everything you were saying was, I remember what you said was one of them that really stuck to me mm -hmm. was, and, and I'd love for you to dive deeper into this. Um, you said prayerlessness is a sign of pride. My goodness, did that one hurt. I was like, you, because you basically were saying prayerlessness is really you being dependent on yourself, saying, God, I don't need you that day. Yeah. And to me, like, I, I, was, I was going through, like, a moment of just, like, prayerlessness. I just, yeah. uh, I made the excuse that I was so busy. I had this, I had that. And I also was just not feeling it. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to pray. But my goodness, after that class, I, I was like, in the morning, I was like, I can't not pray. Because then it's really me saying, I can do this on my own, and I know I can't, so I need to pray. So if you could just dive a bit deep into that, and like what you really meant by that, because that was one powerful gem right there. <laughs> my goodness. Praise God. I mean, listen, I, I am definitely a work in progress, and yeah. I did not start off being a prayer warrior. Mm -hmm. I... You know, it's out of necessity that um, I developed and I learned skills and I, because I knew I needed help and I had no one around me to really, um, who really knew the answers to the questions and the situations that um, I was facing. And I learned at a young age to really just go to God. So it hurt mm. when I realized that I was for a long time, uh, for a really long time, even in seminary, um, after seminary. I was not, um, I was not really praying. Mm. I was reading my Bible and I'd have a quiet time, but I was not, I was living very self-sufficient mm. and I didn't realize it. And the Lord is so gracious and loving. So at this point, my daughter was like, I think three. Mm. And, you know, we're trying to, you know, raise her in the things of God, even though she's little. And, and um, I was really struggling with sleepless nights, you know, all the mm. things. And I felt the Lord when one night when I was putting her to bed. Again, it's not an audible voice, but it is so from another place sure. that I knew it was the Holy. I mean, actually, then I, I didn't even really know about the Holy Spirit, to be honest with you then. I mean, I knew there was a Holy Spirit, but I didn't know him like how we know him. Cool. Um, so I heard, what do you love more? And it wasn't a mean question. And I knew in that question what it, he was asking me, what do I love more, my sleep or prayer? And it was like, it was a matter of fact, there was no judgment in it. It was just an honest question. Like I, I can't, cause I can, I know that that can sound like not a nice question, but it was the sweetest, gentlest, loving way that the Holy Spirit did it. And I was like, and I knew I felt conviction. 
I was like, I mm. love sleep more. I really do. I, and that was, so that's kind of where my path been. And I, I felt the Holy Spirit was challenging me to get up very early. Now, this is my journey. I'm not saying this has to be everyone's journey. Mm -hmm. I'm just testifying to how God worked with me. So there's no condemnation for people <laughs> if they're not getting up. But this is at this season. And honestly, the reason why I, I can see now why he did this, because he knew that there were some really bad storms coming and I needed to mm. be grounded. So it's like he allows things for a certain amount of time, but then he knows that you need to get ready. So it was wow. like, I needed to get up early. I set my alarm and then I snooze, right? And then the next day, he would just wake me up earlier before my alarm <laughs> until he actually woke me up 30 minutes earlier. Nah, this guy's funny. <laughs> God is funny. Okay. A hundred percent. And it was at that point where I was like, okay, I need, I, this is, it's time to get serious. And I had no idea the storm that was wow. coming, but it was in that place of, um, you know, denying myself and getting up early you know, the cup of coffee, the Bible. And I, I mean, I journaled it all because so much of what he was giving mm. me and highlighting in scripture. And even then I wasn't really praying. And I think, you know, there is an aspect of prayer where, where I'm talking and it's talking to God and, you know, it's all that kind of stuff. But it, prayer has become and developed a way of life mm. where I'm always trying to um, listen and sense. And my life is becoming more of a prayer to him and as an intercessor i'm trying to be a, a way for him to connect to others mm. um so it was it's definitely been a journey like it's not like oh i just can just pray for all hours and then it's just him bringing the right people into my life um you know really practically speaking i god connected me with these uh, wonderful koreans um who taught me like what early morning like intercession was praying in tongues. I mm. received my, you know, the, the gift of tongues through the laying on, on the hands of the pastor. And they just really challenged me to, you know, to just go all in. And I learned how to hear from the Holy Spirit. Just So he just brought me people who immersed me in it. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want what they have. Mm. It's available, you know, because there's no special people. And, and I'm a reader and a learner. So even with small kids, I'm always reading books. I, you know, I average probably about 20 books a year hmm. and I, it's all Christian living, um, spiritual warfare, um, intercession and stuff because I know that there's more and I find those leaders and people who are men and women of character um, and purity and I try to learn and just be with them and hmm. practice because it's one of those things you just, you learn by doing. I, I really, really admire your hunger for more of God. I mean, it, it really is incredible because it's something that I've always wanted and it's something that a lot of um, people around me really want. Yeah. You know, and we talk about it and we hear about it and it's like, have more hunger, have more hunger, but it, it doesn't come to us naturally. You know, I, I'm at a place right now where it feels like I'm I'm praying and reading because I know that I have to. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to do that. I want to pray and read because I want to. But how do I stir that up inside myself to be like, I really want to get up early and pray because I love spending time with the Lord. I would love to be able to say that from an honest place. Yeah. But I can't. I, I really do feel right now that it's it's difficult for me and it's like oh i have to pray i gotta give god at least some time like i can't do that like yeah. I, I gotta pray and, and i'll pray and, and sometimes it's a really good prayer session and other times it's like you know a, a quick one how do i really um begin to just desperately want more of the lord and like really enjoy my time with him yeah it's uh i think the fact that you're even asking this question is the, the first steps. Mm. I think we always have to acknowledge that we're not where we want to be, that there's more, and that we have need. Mm. I mean, God never passes up when his kids cry out, you know what I'm saying? Um, and I think he is a God of process. He's a God of journey, and there's no condemnation for your journey. Um, you know, when I was in my early 20s, I was in school and stuff, but I wasn't, like I said, I didn't have that prayer life. I didn't have that and it was the growing conviction of like, okay, 
um, the things I'm facing require more than I have resource or knowledge. And I think when you get put into certain situations, it's not because it's not because I, I mean, I wish I could say I was noble, but I had no I like literally needed help mm. and there was no options. So I think the thing is you have to decide like, OK, God, I'm going to get you. I want you at any cost. And that's a scary place. That's a scary place to, to go. Right. I want mm. you at any cost and pray for your own spiritual hunger. I pray for the spiritual hunger at our church. I pray for the spiritual hunger of my family. I pray. It's one of the biggest things I pray regularly for people who are on my prayer list. Um, I mean, now I have a systematized way to do it. I mean, it's still all spirit led, but I don't, I have a, you know, from years of doing this, right. I've developed what works for me. So I think pray that for yourself and get, um, you know, friends and stuff that will pray like, Lord, stir up our hunger. Cause I'm mm. telling you, he's not going to not, he's going to answer that. That's a prayer he's longing mm. to answer. And I think it's in the wrestling of how you find the place, your sweet spot with him. Um, that's going to set people free. And that, so it's like my journey now I'm sharing with you. I, I was just an average person going mm. through life, you know, doing this stuff, but he was building history with me. We were building trust. I was learning to hear him and communicate and he developed a love that now it's not like when I was young, I wanted to, you know, go to seminary and go and change the world and do great things for God. And that's great. That's like, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But my journey then became like, oh my gosh, I just want to be with him. Mm. Like, I, I, I don't care if it impacts anyone. Like, Jesus, you're, you're my prize. You're my portion. You're my reward. I want to just be with you. And whatever you do with my life outside of that, like, I don't care. And it, but that was, it's the mm. journey of how he knows how to, he knows how to get you there. He knew how to get me, how to bring the right people. Like I'm mm. part of Corey Russell online. He's an intercessor, raising up the next generation of um, intercessors. Cause he was raised by um, old women when he first came to, he's a year older than me, but he came to Christ, a, I think right around the same time I did. Mm. And women, old women who were in the back rooms took him in and, and just taught him how to pray and how to wow. want Jesus above all. So listening to his testimonies and listening to him talk about his struggles has freed me to be able to be like, listen, this wasn't awesome all the time. This wasn't mm -hmm. like, it's really, I know that I know that I know that God has given me this grace and he wants to give it to all his children. Wow. Wow. <sighs> uh, for a faith encouraging reason for myself and for everybody listening, um, can you share a bit about the power of prayer and why really is it something important? Because for me, I think sometimes, you know, in the word it says the spirit is willing, but the flesh, mm -hmm. but the flesh is weak, is weak. That happens to me a lot. Um, for example, when I'm praying for this ministry, the, the podcast, uh, a lot of times it's like it, it it feels more productive to to work on it than to talk about it, meaning prayer. Right, of course. And so a lot of times in my head, I, I deminimize the power of prayer. And, you know, I've heard countless testimonies where it's like if you really had to pick between the two, trust that God is going to give it to you. For example, your sleep. Which one do you love more, your sleep or prayer? What if like through the prayer you you make impact and the lord just gives you energy that you don't really need that much sleep you know it's it's entirely possible but that requires an insane amount of faith because it's like no god but i need to sleep so that i could do your work and yeah. uh, so i could go you know i'll pray whatever yeah all the excuses kind of pile in and and i think we constantly need that reminder of prayer is powerful and um i remember we did in an episode on love and it said the true like uh defining moment of your love for somebody is how much you pray for them and to me that was it was something beautiful because it's not just like showing love showing love doing stuff but it's like in the back end like i'm praying for you and meaning it and, and doing meaning it. it exactly yeah so i want my heart to really get to that point of like god prayer above all else like 
before I do the work, before I uh, post anything, before I go to work, before I go to school. Like prayer is my foundation for my day, for my week, for my month, for my life. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to say that. So just like if you have any uh, maybe testimonies or any um, just wisdom you could pour out onto us about how powerful prayer really is. Absolutely. I have tons of testimonies, but I feel like I should start with um, the biggest shift that the Lord used to get me to this place of utter dependence, like mm. really an awareness, like it doesn't matter my skills or my gifts. I do have natural talents in certain areas. Um, realizing that nothing that lasts is going to be done in my strength. Mm. And as my mind got renewed, right, with the word of God, and I have more of an eternal perspective, I'm living for future generations, right? And I'm living for, you know, my family line. I'm living to run my leg of this race on this earth, um, to be faithful with God, with what God is calling me to do, um, and to do it, you know, with as much joy and love and enjoy him in the process, right? So my that's my outlook but i didn't get there um easily and this is not you know i just believe that god knows exactly what process we each need we each need to go through right to bring us to that place of like utter dependence so for me i'll condense it but um when i in 2018 you know i'm, I'm raising kids where uh, my daughter was I guess in fifth grade, because we had just started homeschooling. My son was in second grade. And um, we that uh, that February, I was not feeling well, but I didn't really know what was going on. And um, But that February, I, had, I turned 40 in um, January. And that February, I had a massive breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, it was a catastrophic, and I don't use that term lightly, um, depression wow. slash burnout. Um, slash just crash like I, and if you were to if we had one of my friends who walked us like there's really no easy way to describe what it was like wow. but in simplest terms my body shut down I, I completely burned my whole systems um, trying to uh, you know what I thought was loving my family well and protecting them and doing all the things and fighting all the battles that were going on around us mm -hmm. And my body just, literally my brain fried. And they wanted to put me into a hospital. And um, But I'm very spiritually sensitive. And my pastor at the time and um, the doctor who was a Christian said, like, it probably really, really would be, it could be very detrimental for me to go into that environment with my challenges being so susceptible to what everybody else is going. So I had a, God is amazing and a, um, the the psychiatrist said okay listen you can not get committed but you have to stay home your kids have to go someplace else and you have to have 24-hour care and i'm calling and talking with you and your husband every day and we'll see if this is viable and if this isn't and if you're not allowed if you're not able to give yourself space to heal then you're gonna have to go in so that i literally Danny, I couldn't pray. I couldn't, I just basically they drugged me and I was sleeping. Mm. And, but again, um, God is so gracious. So the night, it was a Sunday night and I was watching church online and I, I like, we really knew something was wrong. Cause I'm like, I really don't feel good. Like, and then the next day is kind of when I had lost touch with reality and got confused and things kind of came to a head, but I was watching a, ch a church service online, Bethel Church, and um, on, on, I mean, this is like one of those things that, and it, I think it will, it will be meaningful to you because of also the name of your podcast and everything, but so I'm, you know, I'm, I know something bad is happening, and I am like, just turn on the service, I just want to hear the worship, and Jonathan Helser comes out, and he's like, oh, we just wrote a new song, we just finished it, we're going to try it with you, and um he, they didn't even have a name for it. But mm. they, the, the lyrics, and here I am, like, something's seriously wrong. And, all, I, you know, I'm just listening. I can't, I can just basically just sit and receive. And it was, um, there's, 
the pressure is real, but the power, but the presence is greater. Hmm. The pressure is real, but his pe- presence is greater. And it's all about um, that there's another person in the fire. Hmm. And when I tell you, we uh, video, like I have a voice mem- memo on my phone because I just like, I'm like, I need this song. And I wrote out the lyrics mm-hmm. and I just, I'm like, no, the pressure is real, but his presence is greater. And that's what got me through that whole time. Mm. Now, you're going to love us because I'm telling you, God is like crazy. So it took me two years to get through that and be like, wow. um, like pretty, I would say at like 70%. And then the third year, I, I probably got to about 80 some percent. Um, and then um, by the fourth year, I, I'm like, I'm back. Mm. I'm, I'm good. So I, I'm like, when are they going to do this song? This song changed my life. This song is like everything with me. Mm-hmm. I need this song. And I waited and waited and waited. To, uh, February. Mm-hmm. So exactly in 2022. Uh, so it's what? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. So exactly four years later, almost to the day, they released the song. Okay. And I'm like, God, you're talking to me. I know that there's something in this. And th- they did make a little changes, but they kept the main song. And I'm like, oh, you finally made this come to my path. Okay, so this is like February 11th or 12th. Okay. And I was like, God, I know that you prepared me when you sent this song last time. Well, wouldn't you know that uh, on February 2, 22, 22, I would get a phone call at around 4.15, and my dad was dead just weeks prior to this song. Mm. And I'm like, God, you've got me. Because I knew the pressure was real, the grief was real, right? I, I And we had to pick up the pieces of my dad suddenly passing. Mm. But I had the comfort of knowing that I had prayed for his salvation for seven, yeah. well, a lot of years. And after seven years, he then became a Christian. Wow. So it was all about... Uh, you know, the fourth man is what the song is called. Mm. And it's about having, he's in the fire with us. Mm-hmm. And that's another reason I was drawn to your podcast, to be honest, and I'm a fan, because we're going to be in the fire. Mm. Life is full of fires. But it's acknowledging and recognizing his presence with us and yeah. receiving. We're not good receivers. We're really good givers, most of us. You know, we'll give, 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 give. And I gave to a point that mm. God wasn't asking me to sacrifice. And so the picking up the pieces of this, I really f- feel he was, f- um, you know, fixing the, the cracks in my foundation, hmm. you know, because you're in, I was in the world for 19 years. Yeah. And then I become a Christian and there's all this mixture, right? And I had operating systems that were pretty firm of self-sufficiency, competency right. and all this stuff. And I feel like for my journey, I needed to be completely leveled he cleaned me out and then he put me back together and because of the longevity i mean this was a slow process yeah i mean ryan didn't know if i mean they told him yeah you'll have your wife back but there's no guarantees right so this was traumatic for our family but he knew what he was doing even the attacks and what however however this was orchestrated he used it for good because i learned utter dependence i could not take care of my husband i could not take care of my kids i needed people from church to help and in that place that's where i learned like this is life or death honestly wow oh gosh you know and it it's it's scary because I don't want people to have to go through all that to realize that. But sometimes we do. Sometimes we just have to. And I think, but but not to, because uh, sp- there's no fear. God right. does not want us to be afraid. And I want right. to encourage everyone, do not be afraid. Because you don't have to think, oh no, something terrible. You don't, it hasn't, doesn't have to be you directly. Mm. You can walk with someone through something terrible. Mm-hmm. And God can get a hold of you if you're willing. It doesn't have to be your journey. Mm. And as an intercessor, I walk with a lot of people through battles for their lives. And sometimes it ends in victory on this earth. And sometimes mm. it ends with victory that they, they aren't healed yeah. and they go home. Um, so I, you don't have to be scared. There's no fear. Okay. Mm. 
it, it doesn't have to be he'll use anything i think the right. biggest thing is not being open and willing to his process um that it takes something bigger than necessary to get our attention hmm. i think for all the things i've overcome in my childhood and my teen years and all you know all that stuff you know i had some really I really needed an overhaul. And it all it also ties into how he plans to use us, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I've been hidden for all, the, I went to seminary, but I've been hidden all these years just learning to love him and, and being yeah. a wife and a mother and just doing, just creating a life that is utterly dependent without anybody knowing. <laughs> oh my gosh. And now I have an opportunity to share with you and your listeners what yeah. you did, you know what I'm saying? But like, I mean, I'm honored because I love to, to talk about what he's done because it's him, it's not me. And I, mm -hmm. I know that can sound cliche, but it, like, mm -hmm. I really know. <laughs> yeah. Like, I know who I am in my worst and I know how far he's brought me. Oh, yeah. So I love sharing these things because we can learn from other people. We don't have to go through everything they went through. We're going to go through stuff, but it doesn't mm -hmm. have to be catastrophic. Mm -hmm. So no fear. Please, no fear. Right, <laughs> right. Real quick, I know the episode is fire. I hope you're enjoying it, but I just want to let you know about our Patreon. If you're looking for a community of strong believers to sharpen you and help you grow in your faith, you want to check out the Patreon. The link is in the bio. We'll see you there. Wow. Um, you you mentioned um, your your father passing away, but that he came to Christ before that. Mm -hmm. um, we all have somebody around us who who does not believe from a prayer perspective how do we pray for these people and i know it can get really discouraging because people have been praying for years mm -hmm. a long long time and sometimes they don't even see the slightest bit of change and sometimes they don't get to see the change um i know you you told me this uh this story before we started recording, I would love it if you could share it again for our listeners. But there, there is that moment, you know, of desperation where you're just like, I, I don't know what else to do, God. You know, so what is your word of encouragement and also strategically and, you know, how, what is the right way to pray for our loved ones who are just not believers? Yeah, it's hard. Um, especially when it's people in your own household, right. people that you really love, like you do not want to be separated, you know, mm -hmm. for eternity with them. Um, so yeah, and it's a labor of love. I think it's easy to see in the natural women, you know, carry the baby and then they birth it. And I think um, it's a it's a very in t um, intentional picture from the Lord that um, as intercessors, we're like midwives, okay? We're helping to birth God's plan for people, whether it's their salvation, their breakthrough, their victory, and most often their destiny. Mm. Because we all need help getting to our destiny, you know? And he's, it's not so much about the destination, it's the process of who he's making us to become so mm. that we can walk in the fullness, in integrity, right. um, with great, with righteousness and purity um, to do and represent him well. So for my dad, you know, I became a Christian um, in 1996. Like I said, it was not, it wasn't really well received. There was a lot of back and forth hostility. Then um, he got very ill and he almost died several times uh, with diabetes. He was a Vietnam War vet and um, all of his health issues have been tied back to his service. So um, we said our goodbyes a lot of for a lot of times and i had no assurance of his salvation and i didn't know if he really got it so i want to just share a quick testimony um i had been praying on my own and, and to be honest after all those years um my daughter at this point was probably like three or four mm -hmm. i had honestly stopped praying for his salvation um it was like i was just like god like i i was praying more for my husband my kids and it was always in my heart, but I had not really continued. But I was in a prayer group, and these women are amazing. And we just contended for our families, and it got me praying for him again. And that was right around the same time um, that he almost died. Like, this was a really, uh, with his blood sugar and stuff, they couldn't revive him. 
and when he was still unresponsible in the hospital, when the ambulance took him. So I was like, Lord, just let him live so I can get to the emergency room so I can know that he's going to be with you. Wow. Um, And crazy, there's a a Christian woman, girl there from high school volunteering. She's like, is that your dad? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, pray. And they got him back. And but it was it was a close call. And my co-leader of that prayer, a, a really awesome woman of God, Donna, She's a doctor. Uh, she's a psychiatrist, but she had been praying, and I, you know, I t- t- texted my fr- my that group to pray for my dad. And she's like, you know, I really feel led. Do you think your dad would see me if I come visit him in the hospital? I'm like, he's not gonna want to see you. But I was like, but you know what? I'm gonna ask him. Mm-hmm. So she happened to be in the area. It was right. It was in December. Uh, it was right around Christmas. And so um, she, she, I asked him. You know, my friend's a doctor. You know, I didn't tell him what kind. Of, I was like, would you be willing to see her? You know, I pray with her, and she really, we've been praying for you and your health, and she just feels like God wants her to, you know, to talk to you. Long story short, she, he he sees her. She talks to my mom and dad, and she leads them both to Christ. She's an evangelist, and I knew she carried that, but I honestly, I didn't believe her when she called me and told me that what happened. And then I talked to them, and I saw the transformation. It wasn't, it was, you know, a process, and I honestly didn't understand the full depths of my dad's conversion until after he passed, when you hear all the different pieces of his story, mm. and you see where he was giving. He was giving to all these Christian organizations. Like, none of us knew. You know what I'm saying? Like he'd read devotionals we gave him. So that was that was huge. And I on I have to be completely honest because God knows my heart. I questioned whether it was real. Right. For a really yeah, long yeah, time. I'm valid. like, let let's see, let's see how this like mm-hmm. was this just because he had a near death experience? Mm-hmm. And so watching him walk that out. And again, he was not a man of many words and he didn't share what was on his heart. So it was it's been finding out after and kind of putting the pieces of like from all the people who came to celebrate his life that were like, oh my gosh, he was a light at um, for the people around him. I mean, he wasn't overtly sharing Jesus, but mm-hmm. he was a light and an encouragement for the fellow veterans when he was getting dialysis wow. because he spent f- four hours, three days a week. Mm-hmm. Um, so he had all these health issues, and we all, you know, we all always thought knew that he could go at any moment. And we were in this, so right around the same time, and this is all going to tie in, he um, he almost died in December. That following uh, January, they said, okay, he's strong enough. He needs to have quadruple bypass. So I was like, oh, okay. I'm like, Lord, okay, he's saved. So so he, you know, we're, we're talking, but I'm still kind of questioning it. Like, is he really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I said, do they give you the date of your surgery? He, so he calls and he goes, yeah, I just got called. They said it's January 25th, and that's my birthday. Hmm. And I said, Dad, that's my birthday. He goes, I know, but I don't get to choose when the when surgery is. I said, I know, but can you can, – he's like, I'm not calling back the doctor, you know, whatever. It is what it is. I said, Dad, can we just – would you mind if we just prayed over the phone, if we just asked God to change it? And he's like – he was like, yeah, whatever, okay. And he, he was – he agreed and he let me yeah. pray. I just prayed a short prayer like, Lord, this is my birthday. Like if something were to happen and you you were to take him, like I just don't want to, I just don't want it to be my birthday. Could you please change the day? And you know we said in Jesus' name, Amen. Got off the phone. It was about I don't know exactly, but I want to say like four hours later. Because my dad's not one to like call me. So when I saw his his number, his cell phone on my phone, I'm like, why is he calling me? And he goes, Al. I'm like, yeah. He's like, you're not gonna believe this. The hospital just called. They changed my surgery to the 26th. Hmm. And it was just silence. And and I'm like, I just start praising God. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my gosh. So, I mean, that was a quick answer. I don't, yeah. t- to be honest, I don't often get quick answers like that. But that just gave me wow. such hope and such faith. Like, God's got him. Yeah. So, you know, so that helped us walk through that, you know, that yeah. time. And um, and then to finish kind of my dad's story, um, because I think it will encourage your listeners, my mom and him didn't have the best of relationships. 
and they really struggled. Um, and there was times where they were both very stubborn and we'd always say, guys, you don't know, you know you're getting older, you know how much time you have left? And they dig their heels in and, and really just hold their ground on certain issues. And I was, and you know, my sister and I grieved us because we're like, you never know when, you know, someone's time's up and whatever. And so all that to say, when I got the call on um, February 22nd, I couldn't believe it because I'm a numbers person. The Lord a lot of times will speak to me in mm-hmm. numbers. And he's, he had showed me 222 for a lot of years. So I was really excited finally to have 222, 22. And we're, I mean, even my family was humoring me. We're like, yeah. And we didn't know that my dad probably passed that morning, mm-hmm. but no one was home to find him. Like, so as soon as it happened and I got the call, I just, you know, I, I reached out to my small group leader and everything and they started praying and I felt just total pe- I, I've never experienced this like this. It was like a blanket came over me and wrapped itself around me and stayed with me. Mm. Um, literally, and I'm not exaggerating, I'm, I'm being very intentional with my words, blanketed me and stayed with me um, for a really long time, I'm trying to guesstimate how much it was. I think it was probably like the, for about a year. Hmm. And it allowed us to walk through all these things. So we show up at my mom's house and, you know, we're shocked. You know, it, it just, this was out of the blue. There was nothing wrong with him, really. I mean, we thought all these other times. I show up, we're waiting for the coroner upstairs. We can't, because of the situation, we couldn't see him. They said it wouldn't be good for us. My, my sister was pregnant with a miracle baby. That's another story. Mm. They were married for a long time, couldn't have kids. Finally, you know. Mm-hmm. But so we're sitting there, and I said, um, I look, and there's, a, there's roses. I say, where are those roses from? She goes, this is February 22nd. And my mom goes, from him. I'm like, him who? She's like, Dad. She's like, he got them for Valentine's Day. I was like, he did what? We're like, our dad got, she said, yeah, he does that sometimes. But he did that the Valentine's Day before he passed. He didn't know. Gets better. You're not going to believe this, Danny. It was President's Day weekend. Mm-hmm. So they had off that Monday. He died the 22nd was a Tuesday. My mom, unbeknownst to her. Now, now remember, the backdrop. These are very stubborn people. Mm-hmm. They love each other very much, but they, do, they don't know how to always show it. And they will be stubborn to a fault. She felt led to go and get him for Valentine's Day and just to celebrate the long weekend because she was still working. She went and got him steak and shrimp. And she came home that Monday, which was the 21st, mm. and said, oh, Paul, I got you steak and shrimp. Which one you want tonight? I'll make you one tonight and one tomorrow. He goes, oh, I don't want to wait. Make me both tonight. She made him a very good dinner that mm. night, the 21st, and that was his last meal. Do you know how much I wept? Because I believe that's the fruit of prayers for all these years, for their marriage, for their salvation, that they wouldn't leave things unsaid and they wouldn't be separated and parted until eternity on bad terms. I mean... (laughs) (laughs) I, I still, as I tell it to you, I still am in awe. Yeah. He's so good and he's in all the details. But in, to your story that you, to the story I shared before. Um, <laughs> You're just going to blow everybody's mind with all these stories. Oh, my goodness. I mean, if people's minds aren't blown <laughs> by, because I, I, I mean, a lot of us are, are really young in the faith and we haven't experienced a lot of what you're telling. And, um, and so to hear that God really does work, like he works not in our timing, not, not in our in ways. Our timing. I mean, I would not, I would not choose for this to happen. You know, like of I, not. I could come to a lot better ways, but in God's sovereignty. Yeah. But His hand was, and it, it sustained me. He had my dad bring her my mom flowers. She had the last meal. She never, at that point, yeah. she cooked for all the years. She doesn't really cook for him anymore. She, he, she cooked, and it was like. And because I had gone through my breakdown and my crash, mm-hmm. I had processed all grief from my life. So I was current. I I did obviously have to process grief of the loss of my father, but I could then be there for my mom and my sister who was pregnant mm-hmm. um, to walk with them through this traumatic loss. I didn't have all that baggage. Yeah. God helped me be in a stable place with him to walk through that. And I had, like I said, that I, the only thing, and I, I remember when it just, it kind of lifted, not in a way that he left, I don't mean that, but it was like this extra 
grace, this extra security, this extra comfort I had mm. until I was ready to be like, okay. And when I, f- I kind of felt it like lighten, I, it's hard to describe. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, thank you, God. And I just felt like, and I didn't feel that as a bad thing. Mm-hmm. I felt it was like, okay, this, this, this season's done and it's now time to do the next thing or like yeah. move into the next phase. Wow. I mean, I, I'd love it if you shared that that testimony you gave me too right before the podcast. That one was just also just mind blowing. This this podcast episode is just gonna be testimonies after <laughs> testimony. I mean, you you did tell me that you you just love hearing testimonies because it really uh, grounds you in your faith. You know, in, in moments where because you know God God works in His own timing, right? And, and it could be years and years um, before we God shows His miraculous power over our lives and certain areas and so to hear that god is continuously moving through this person through this person through this person it, it's faith in building right because like i said after years and years of praying for a loved one to come to christ it can get discouraging but when you hear countless testimonies of like hey my father got saved my mother got saved my sister my brother they, they got saved this happened this happened okay maybe i shouldn't stop praying <laughs> You know, maybe I shouldn't yeah. stop praying. And it's really encouraging. So if you could just share that last, that that, that testimony that you gave me. Sure. Um, I love it. Um, like I said, I, I don't know. I'm going to get the gist of it and the facts, but I don't remember all the details. Yeah. Um, but there was a young man. Uh, I believe I heard this through Corey Russell. And I'm going to go back to my stuff to, so I can verify it. But um, he was sharing that um, there was a pastor who, for whatever reason, was hitchhiking. And he didn't want to hitchhike or whatever, but he found himself in this position and an old man in a very um, expensive car pulled up and picked him up. And he was, they just started talking. They decided where he could, how far he could take him. And they were just talking, the old man was talking about his businesses and and I don't remember the name or the businesses. Um, but they got to know each other and this pastor is sitting there and he's, he can see that they're getting to the point where he's going to get dropped off and he has this nagging urge from the Holy Spirit, share Jesus with him, talk to mm. him about Jesus. And he's like, oh, like he really had an internal struggle, mm-hmm. like really, because he's like, well, we've had all this good conversation, like this guy, like he was, you know, not a serial killer. I'm getting safely to where I, you know, the things. And um, he's like, all right. He's like, uh, you know, I just, I'm a Christian. I really feel like I'm supposed to talk to you about Jesus. Do you know about Jesus? And the man actually starts crying and mm-hmm. um, he gives his life to Christ right there. And, um, you know, I don't. It wasn't like a huge exchange of like what happened, but he's like, whoa, like he was ready, you know, kind yeah. of thing. And um, he got out of the car, went on his life. And it, it was like five or seven years later, this young pastor happened to be traveling through Chicago. Hmm. And he's like, oh, I'm going to go look up. He remembered the name of the man in the business. And he's like, I'm going to go there and see him because I want to hmm. see how he's doing in his faith. And he shows up and he goes to the counter and says, I'd like to see Mr. whatever. So he's like, oh, please have a seat. So then after a little bit, you know, the front, the desk calls and mm-hmm. said, okay, you can go see Mrs. And he was very disappointed, but he goes into the office and there's, you know, a woman sitting and he introduced himself and said, hi, I met your husband, um, you know, five or seven years ago and gave mm-hmm. the date and her face just drops. Mm-hmm. And she goes, sit down. And what he learns is this woman is a Christian and had been praying for the salvation of her husband for their whole marriage. Mm. And that day, (laughs) that old man picked up that young pastor and that pastor shared Jesus with him. Mm -hmm. And within hours of after dropping off the young pastor, he was killed in a car accident. So for five to seven years, again, I'm sorry, I don't remember the time, Mm -hmm. His wife never knew whether her prayers were answered if she would see her husband again. Yeah. And five or seven years later, this young man comes and tells, no, he, he, was, he was weeping and confessing his sin and he had a real conversion. And, you know, obviously the woman is just o- overcome by God's goodness and grace that, she, you know, she, that he will be in heaven. <sighs> It, it it reminds me of a lot of um, John the Baptist. We had uh, we had Samuel on 
on the podcast and we were just talking about it how he really did god's work his entire life dedicated dedicated to god's work but he didn't get to see the end of it he didn't get to experience that like almost the victorious moment of of jesus dying on the cross and coming back and like the savior of the world he simply got to pave the way for him but he didn't get to experience it but we, you know, we we believe strongly John the Baptist in heaven is yeah. just <laughs> is honored beyond honored over there. Yeah. But it's similar to that, you know, like after five to seven years of not knowing or not seeing your answered prayer, it did happen. Yeah. You know, like God's okay with you sitting in the unknown. <laughs> Why? I know. Why? Why does he do that? Ah, so frustrating. I know. But it, it, that's so a challenge to us because yeah. we don't like the unknown and we no, want we don't. the dots to connect. We but do. I mean, at 46, I'm now starting to see from over the years mm -hmm. how some of the, and I'm sure I have just a fraction of an understanding. And I'm sure that I'll, you know, some more connections will be made and I'll get yeah. some more understanding. And probably a lot of it I won't understand mm. until I'm with him. Yeah. My goodness. I have um, two to three verses that I want to share with you that I'd love it if you would break down for me. Um, one of them, and these two go linked, is Mark eleven twenty four. 24. Uh, I tell you, you can pray for anything, and if you believe that you've received it, it will be yours. Mm -hmm. And Matthew 7, 7 through 11. Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds. And everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Um, what does this verse mean to you? Mm -hmm. does, this, does this mean like everything that I pray for will happen? Or how should our hearts be positioned to actually fulfill these verses? Good question, Danny. I love your questions. Um, yeah, this was part of my journey as an intercessor because yeah. um, it's so much bigger than, um, you know, like there's different levels to reading scripture. There's a, you know, like a super, there's like the basic on it, you know, level, which is, and it's all inspired. It's all true. It's all good. Um, but then there's depth and the, the closer we get to him and the more revelation he gives us and the more we know him and we understand his ways, that's where, if you read through, I, I don't remember if it's Psalm 68 or 78, but I love I love both of those. But one of them talks, it's a parable of, of Israel's journey. Mm -hmm. And it always says, but Israel didn't learn his ways. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the quest for all of us as, as his children. We need to learn his ways. We understand his nature and we encounter that, but we have to learn his ways, why he lets us sit in uncertainty. Mm -hmm. um, and especially as it pertains to prayer. So what I learned, and is very true in scripture, scripture has, uh, we all want to like pick a side, right? Mm -hmm. uh, free will or predestination, mm -hmm. you know, either or, either all, right? But scripture wants us to hold both of these and say, yes, there's a tension and they're both true. And somehow in God's mercy and his grace, he makes them both tr true. Mm. And how this pertains to prayer is, and how I understand this, would be as he transforms me, as I spend time in his presence, as I, I feast on his word, which is spirit mm. and truth and life, I am changed and I start, you know, my mind is getting renewed and I start to see life and the world from his perspective. Mm. What, I, what grieves him begins to grieve me. What he hates, I begin to hate. Now, it's, mm. a, it's a process. Right. Okay, so I'm, you know, but in that place, my wants as Allison get replaced where or brought into an agreement. Mm -hmm. Allison gets brought into it or Danny gets brought into agreement with what God wants so that now I am praying the prayers mm. that he wants to answer. Hmm. So therefore, when I get to that place, then I'm not just praying selfish prayers to build my whatever. Right. I'm actually, and this is where I would say that the church probably is just stepping into, I mean, global, mm -hmm. um, learning the, the art of prayer because it's not all talking, talking, talking. Mm -hmm. It's 
learning to hear from him and praying what he wants to pray because he's already decided to answer it. And that's mm. the hearing his voice and learning to pray and come into alignment with that using scriptures and what he shows you, pictures, you know, dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, so therefore, when I when you do get into that sweet spot and you do come into that alignment, and it's trial and error, mm-hmm. like as everything is in the Christian walk, you know, like if you think you hear a word for someone, you're still learning, is it God, is it me, you know? Right. and. And you try and you step out and you don't say, thus saith the Lord. You say, hey, I'm learning, (laughs) you know, (laughs) and you're humble and you're gracious and you do that with prayer. And that's why I think you need a prayer community where you can be like, hey, this is Mm. what I'm sensing. And when you pray his will into a situation, if you like when I, I always ask him, like, what are you doing here? How do you want me to pray? How can I partner with you? Because Mm -hmm. honestly, when I first started out, like I said, when I went to seminary, oh yeah, I'm gonna speak, I'm gonna do this and have this ministry. But this journey has got me like, honestly, I would rather be at home praying and interceding for people on the front lines than speaking or teaching. Um, And if you knew me back then, you'd be like, what? So I'm just being totally honest Yeah. um, because I like that. But the secret place, and Corey Russell, I, I have to give credits. This is not original. He says, if you have a revelation of who you have an audience with, you'll never want an audience with anyone else. Hmm. And it's that revelation that the God of the universe is listening to you. He cares what's on your heart. He cares what's on your mind. Hmm. And he wants, he wants your thoughts on things. Wow. He doesn't want us to be a robot. And in that interchange with him, in that dialogue, in that honest prayer, a place of prayer where like, David would wrestle with him and be like, these people hate me. And he'd be complaining, complaining, complaining. And he's like, but Lord, where can I go? I love you. He always comes back. Mm. It's a lament. And it's like he refixes his eyes on him. And I think prayer is, and I know it's not a simple answer, but it's that process of being real with our feelings with him, Mm -hmm. interacting with what scripture says, hearing from the Holy Spirit, and letting him work in our hearts mm. to bring us to a place where we're more in alignment with him and that we will see our prayers answered more often because mm. it's coming from a place of strategy from him. Amen. That was awesome. And for my last verse, uh, James five sixteen says, Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The earnest prayer of a righteous person has greater power has great power and produces wonderful results. So my question is, does our sin affect the results of our prayer requests? I know it's a heavy- No, no, I love it. I could talk about this stuff forever. It's just like, um, I just felt conviction with this. Yeah. Because it's, um, you know, we we talk a lot about like, me and my friend sometimes will reflect on this. Um, we'll see somebody that is so hungry for the Lord mm-hmm. and we see God move in incredible ways. Like they'll lay hands on somebody, boom, healing. They'll speak this, like their sermon was amazing. Like, and for example, Pastor Charles is one of those people that's oh, just him. like, the Lord is on that man. Oh, such honor for that man of God. Yes. And so you know, it, it brings conviction and also encouragement for me where it's like, I want to live righteously because I want my prayers to be answered. And I guess going back to how you answered the last one, it's not that I want my prayers to be answered. I want my prayers to be more aligned. Uh, I got it. I learned See? Look at that. <laughs> to be more aligned to um, the prayers that he wants to answer. So does our sin affect our prayer requests? So there's an easy answer and then there's like kind of like the complete answer. So I would say God can work even through our sin. And if he, if he purposes something, you know, to do something, he will use imperfect people, people who are not even mm-hmm. Christians to accomplish his will. So I think in that respect, um, his will will be done. And if it doesn't work through someone or they're not willing to do it, he'll find someone else to do it. There's, you know. Interesting. He has ways to get it down. He's outside of time, so he knows who he's, you know, we can't even, we, our Grasp minds it. can't yeah, get yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would say the the beauty of partnership with God is that we are in Christ and he wants to work with us as a tag mm-hmm. team, okay? We're, Jesus is our older brother, father, like mm-hmm. the family business. Ooh. 
of restoring souls, of seeing people come alive in the spirit and how walking in eternal life now mm -hmm. and then the transition is just like the fullness of it, right? Mm -hmm. So in that respect, we want I want to be as close as I can to God. Mm -hmm. And we know that he's not afraid of sin because he comes to sinners and he meets us in sure. our pit. But I want to be have the most in unhindered in my heart so that he can flow through me with the greatest amount of his power. Mm. And that requires purity and consecration. Mm. Now we don't earn it, but we have a part to play in cultivating our heart, in living in a such a way that, you know, Paul says, in the, you know, everything is per permissible and not everything's good. When you're on this journey to be a vessel, to be, um, you know, to represent him well, Mm -hmm. And when you've been given a platform and, and different opportunities to really shepherd a multitude, okay, you want him to be seen. You want him to get the glory and you want mm -hmm. him to have full reign. And you're so surrendered to him. I mean, it's so evident even in, in this podcast, like your heart behind it that you're willing to do whatever to be close to him. Mm. So it's not about what we do, what we don't do, and the legality. It's about like, there's always more of him. Mm. We can have as much of him as we want. And he's not impatient. He's all the time, in the, I mean, because he's outside of time. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll look and be like, oh, well, by the time I'm 20, I want this. And by the time I'm 30, I want this. Or four, you know, mm -hmm. whatever our time frames. And he's like, no, I love you so much. I love you in this process. I love watching how you handle this. I love seeing your heart that has an inkling towards me, but there's all this flesh that is, you know, hindering us, right? And it's crucifying that flesh, allowing ourselves, not giving into the feeling like, I don't wanna pray. No, I'm gonna pray. Mm. Um, and honestly, I still fall victim to it. I had shared in the class and I, cause I have to be, the Lord knows, so I have to be on. I had shared in um, the class you spoke about, how the Lord really convicted me to pray 20 minutes in the spirit uh, every morning. And it was, it took years for me to get to a place where I could do that. I had to start with five minutes and whatever. And I was seeing traumatic, really good fruit from that. Mm -hmm. Not long after mm -hmm. I spoke at that class, I started realizing I hadn't been as consistent. Hmm. And it's so subtle the way the enemy works, so subtle. I wasn't doing anything sinful except he had called me to something and it somehow through life circumstances what it fell by the wayside so i was like no mm. the enemy will not take me from i am not going to stay in disobedience mm. and therefore i have regained i've picked that back up mm. um, and what did you mean by pray in the spirit so like when i received my i had prayed you know they talk about praying in tongues in the bible now there's the the spiritual gift of where you would say it in a corporate setting and then someone would interpret. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, there are churches who do do that, um, but I'm talking about your private prayer language. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, that's, to me, I started listening to people, um, you know, great men and women of God talk about the importance of solid time praying in tongues. And it's a very humbling thing. It sounds like gibberish mm -hmm. to my ears, right? But am I willing to submit and be humble to sound like a fool, even though no one's around? or I'm doing it on my minutes. So, but listen, <laughs> 20 minutes. some of these people do it hours for the day, but listen, oh while gosh. this was years, so I'm, I'm being, I'm yeah. not trying to be some super person. Yeah, yeah, I'm being yeah. very honest. I started with five minutes. And I actually set a timer on my phone. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, something, and Corey Russell really, in court, he encouraged our community of intercessors to do this. He says something switches around 20 minutes. If you can push through to 20 minutes, and it does, you feel all of a sudden like, you push past all the hindrances to prayer and there's a there's a it's hard to describe but there's a lightness mm. and there's a less resistance um so and praying in tongues i believe everyone can have it it's up to god of how he gives it and when he gives it and mm -hmm. i my journey was i prayed for about a year for it before he released that gift and i started doing but i didn't understand how to use it and then it, you know, it can be such a divisive thing. I don't think it's a mark of salvation. I think 
got the Holy Spirit and saving someone, fruit, that's the yeah. mark of salvation. But I think it's one of the, um, the enemy knows what to go after mm. that cause division in the body of Christ. And I think it is an underutilized weapon because that's what's building up your inner man, mm -hmm. your spiritual. So it, it, it takes discipline and I'm stubborn. I have German in me and I'm like, no, I'm going to do this. Like, <laughs> you know, now it took me two years to get to a place of conviction to actually okay. do it. So I don't want to, you know, but, and I said, and I just pushed through and it gets easier and easier. Mm -hmm. And when I pray in the spirit, um, and I'm just praying in tongues. I don't know what I'm saying. I can feel spirit, like I can feel kind of the sometimes the mood or like the spirit behind it. Sometimes, like sometimes it's serious and it's militant, like when I'm praying for someone's mm -hmm. life. And you know, that some people would call that war tongues, where it's very like it's aggressive. Mm. And a lot, sometimes it's more, you know, so I don't know what I'm saying, but it enables me to pray throughout the day. Be and my kids will be like, who are you praying for? And sometimes I'm just praying and sometimes there is someone I really am interceding for. Mm -hmm. But they've gotten used to it now, like, oh, who needs help now? You know? <laughs> That's awesome. Wow. So to, um, to kind of, as my last question, uh, do you have like a practical prayer structure for us that we may be able to follow maybe if you know if we want to wake up early and we want to be in prayer like how much of it should it be us talking how much of it should it be us just listening to the spirit just like maybe something simple for uh, as a guidance for us to how do we begin the art of prayer like really getting into that yeah i think the um and again i'm borrowing from Corey because he's really good at getting people the simple he's like set a time hmm. set a place and show up okay um, listen, when I was, especially when I was in school and in, like in mm -hmm. more closer to your age, I did a lot of my devotions at night and Hey, in the Jewish, that's the, uh, the, the beginning of the new day is at night. Hmm. So, cause the sun sets mm -hmm. and it's a new day. So there's grace, like God's going to lead you on your journey. The most important thing is to find a time and a place where you're not going to be interrupted and you can be consistent. Some people mm -hmm. do it in their commute. Some people do it in the morning, like some people do it at their lunch break like there's no right or wrong time and i feel like god it will lead you in that journey mm. so s set a time set a place and show up wow. and i listen i want to tell you most of the time <laughs> my time is not very awesome like there aren't angels and revelations mm. and it's it feels almost like nothing's happening okay okay but i show up i read the word um i'm a journaler I know not everyone is, but my journaling has evolved and now I have a whole big system. Um, if I, like, I, my sharing in any of this is not to, that this is what you should do, is mm -hmm. to spark creativity. Hey, I could do that. Mm -hmm. And may give you ideas as the spirit leads you, you know, of what it could look like for you. But um, I'm doing, I really felt the Lord challenging me this year to read more scripture. Um, I had heard a testimony of James Coli. Um, He's an apostle in Africa, and he reads 25 chapters of scripture every day. And he prays in the spirit for hours and hours. But his, the, the, his testimony is amazing. Uh, he was a cult. He was actually um, in the occult over Africa, came to Christ, crazy, yeah. crazy testimony. And now he's, you know, this leader, and he has insight of the occult world because he was so high up mm. of how to defeat it. And so I, I heard his testimony. I was because it's all about intercession and consecration and prayer. And I was like, oh my gosh, you know, you have to just surround yourself with testimonies and people who are doing it wow. and immerse yourself with these people because it, you'll catch it. You'll catch that hunger. You'll catch that flame. Hmm. So I started doing Bible recap um, this year. I'm loving it. It's, I mean, it, it's, it takes about 20 minutes, but it's like anywhere from three to four to five chapters a day. And then, other late, and I mean, there's tons of read through the Bibles in here. It doesn't matter which one, but it was a challenge for me to read so much. Mm. Um, and then what I do is I take notes on that. Well, actually, my new thing is I start off my journal and my prayer time with, uh, and this is new. I would say within the last six to eight months, um, I really felt the Lord calling me, you know, to consecrate and mm -hmm. to really be current with my confession and very intentional. So I start the day. Um, 
every morning I say, Lord, I, I come here and I confess my sin and I wait on the Lord mm. and I wait for the Holy Spirit to bring to mind things. Now I meet in the morning um, from the last day or whatever recently and I confess them and I write down. I mean, the most the things I'm most praying for, to just be totally honest, is judging, pride, um, offense, um, these type of things, idolatry, things that have come into the place of uh, giving me life and meaning that are not mm -hmm. God. And I just say, Lord, you know, cleanse me from this. Have your blood wash over me. Free from this. Purify me and fill me with your spirit. I need your mm -hmm. spirit for this day. And I want to say like, oh, it's because I'm, no, I'm a homeschool mom. <laughs> <laughs> homeschool is intense and I need his spirit yeah. to get through it. So that's where that was birthed. Then I do my Bible recap. I take a couple notes. So this way I can revisit things. Then one of my important things, I share this all the time with women that I meet, I do uh, O-M and I draw a heart on my heart. And I'll just share a couple things that I that are on my heart, They're, whether it's something I'm worried about, something that's heavy on my heart, a concerning situation. So it's not a full journal. I have another journal for that. But something that's weighing on me um, or something that's really good that I'm excited about mm -hmm. or a testimony or a praise or like I talked about, oh, I'm going on this. Lord, please use me on this today. Mm -hmm. Like help me to be yielded to sh share only what you would share, yeah. um, that kind of thing. And then I do my prayer and then I that's like probably – about half the list. I have a system of, and listen, you don't have to have a system, just start. But just right. to give you an idea, I pray for healing. I lump all my people who are battling cancer. Mm. Um, and I see people get healed eventually mm -hmm. and go in remission. Some people get healed by going to heaven. I just lost a dear friend, um, Amy. She, her cancer came back. I walked with her. The Lord ordained that we would um, reconnect. We were old soccer teammates. Oh. Uh, from back in the day, and um, her cancer came back. I reached out to her. I said, listen, I'm an intercessor. Please, if you have a me anything that you need for me to pray, I would love to pray. And that just nine months I walked with her. Mm. And she battled for her life. And it was hard, mm. you know, like, and it was not fun. And it was it was actually really gut-wrenching to watch her suffer as much as she did. She's mm. a Christian. You know, she's with the Lord now. Um, she went home uh, the end of, uh, end of November this year. Um, but even in that, um, as an encouragement is she was able to really share some deep things with me and, um, she really wanted to battle the cancer holistically, spiritually. She was doing the, the physical things, right? Mm -hmm. The chemo, the radiation, alternative treatments. But she's like, I know there's a spiritual piece. So we, I walked her through forgiveness. I walked her through, I mean, I was, you know, I have all this knowledge and all this stuff and I want to be like, but I wanted to wait to be asked. Mm. And I would pray, Lord, if she, if she's supposed to, if we're supposed to talk about these things, please have her bring up. And she says, listen, she texts me, hey, I know healing is, you know, sometimes there's unforgiveness and stuff. Could you talk to me about inner healing? And I'm like, God, <laughs> are you kidding me? <laughs> and that's how we walked through her illness until yeah. she went home. Wow. So, I mean... It's a it's a huge loss. I grieve, but it makes me even more determined for the next person. So I, I pray for healing for different people. Mm -hmm. um, then I do grieving because ever since losing my dad, now I'm very aware of the grieving. And I pray for those that I know who are grieving, and not only just a loved one, mm -hmm. but any form. And I pray for salvations. I have people that are on my list, and I love watching that list get smaller. Yeah. Uh, I pray for marriages. I pray for people who are trying to have kids because so many people are, are struggling with fertility issues. And I love watching that list of the fertility issues become babies now that I'm praying Amen. for. Amen. And it just goes right down. And I do mission. Yeah. I pray for the mission, any ministries that I feel led to pray for. And then I pray for my family. Mm you know, person by person, and then whoever the Lord leads. So there's no you, right... you do that every day? Every day. My goodness. How long does that take you? Um. Well, now listen, I have the freedom of homeschool. Gotcha. So I don't have... I can, you know, start my day. When I, but I do get up very early, and my kids know, do not... Unless it's, like, really Emergency, important. Yeah. yeah. Do not interrupt my time with my coffee and my prayer and my journaling. But I would say, on average, it's about an hour and a half. Gotcha hour an hour and a half and if i could and if i didn't have responsibilities like in the summer i'll probably take 
two, three hours. I mean, I just love it. It's my sweet spot. Yeah. It's just, it's not work. It's like as effortless as breathing. Wow. And I have such delight because you see answers and hear testimonies. And I'm like, oh my gosh, my prayers could have played a small part in that. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't know to pray for that, but Holy Spirit mm -hmm. brought that person to my heart. Wow. And you're just in awe that you could partner with them. Wow. That's so awesome. set a time, set a place and show up and yeah. he'll lead you. So it's actually crazy that, that you say that um, the Lord really led me to. So we have an online community um, here for the for the podcast. We have a, a couple of people on that and it's an absolute blessing and we're building up a really awesome community. So uh, join that. Um, but he led me to start a 630 a.m. prayer time with them. Uh, I don't like waking up early. I don't know why I did it. The the greatest things that happen to me in my life are the ones that I think about the least, which sounds ironic, but the Lord will just plant it, and in the next two minutes, I have it. Yeah. Like, I have it running. I didn't even get to think it through. I'm not like, you know, I didn't think it through until after. The You're Lord's like, why like, did I do this? Exactly. The Lord's like, 6.30 a.m., do it. I'm sending a message on, on our Discord and letting everybody know this is what's going to happen from now on. It's yeah. too late. I'm committed. And then I'm like, wait a minute. 6 30 a.m what am i doing it's the lord and so uh we've had about two weeks of doing that yeah. and just two weeks and it's been an absolute blessing it's it's been awesome so i really encourage everybody listening if you are looking for what you're talking about a prayer community come join us 6 30 in the morning on tuesdays it's a blessing but um i love it yeah yeah blessings man that's yeah, awesome you. you're thank doing you. it yeah I'm, tr I'm trying i'm trying letting the lord lead me but allison it has been an absolute blessing Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for answering um, my questions and probably the questions of a lot of people. I really do hope that this episode was um, encouraging and also faith building. And um, yeah, I before we end real quick, mm -hmm. I love doing this at the uh, end of my episodes. What is one thing that you would like to tell the generation of, you know, of today? Ooh, so much. Um, I feel like I'm a mother in the spirit. Um, the Lord's taught me um, and given me a heart to just see, raise up as many young people. Um, so I just want to say like, oh my gosh, God loves you. Mm. Jesus is so enamored with you in your imperfections, in your weaknesses, in your not able to get up at 6.30 or 5.30, in your missed quiet times in the... Because it's all about he created you and he, he's just, he, he delights in you. And he wants you to experience the love and the freedom to delight in him back. Because in that, it, it blesses you. Mm. And I just know that everything that's come against your generation and even the younger ones, um, the devil's overplayed his hand. Mm. And I believe, and this is confirmation as you're talking about your prayer, like, I believe that you guys, like God has raised you guys up for such a time as this, mm -hmm. that you guys are going to pick up um, with sincerity, in purity, um, in, with integrity. You're going to know him and, and be healthy and righteous representatives of his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And it's going to change the world. Amen. And I am so excited for you guys because I think – there's been a lot of errors in my generation and, and above me that there's a lot of things that we got right and a lot of things that we didn't. Mm. And I just have full confidence that the Lord is raising you guys up and the things that you've walked through and the challenges that your generation mm. is like for such a time as this. Amen. And he's giving and is going to release the keys and the strategies as you guys gather in prayer and seek him mm. for those he's called you to reach. And so I have super, like, I am cheering you guys on. Um, anything for young adults because you're the church of now and you're going to carry it um, into the future mm -hmm. and then you're going to help raise up, you know. The next. Yeah. And it's just about running your leg well and faithfully to the best of your ability mm -hmm. um, and passing it on. And, and so that the next generation has even more hunger. Mm -hmm. um, we'll take where you reach and build on that be their starting mm -hmm. point. So I hope, and I know, and I pray, really, I do, uh, for you young people that you show us and you show the world what healthy marriages look like, healthy mm, ministries, amen. 
because the family is the most under attack and yet true, true. the kingdom god's kingdom is family mm. we're family as a body of christ and then individual families and then we all gather at a church family mm. and i really believe um partner with the with uh different generations yeah. really I believe that's very biblical, Joel. The the, the generations turning. That's yeah. where the revival and the the transformation. I need your zeal, because I'm getting older. I'm not yeah. always as you know ze zealous as I was in my youth, but a lot of times zeal can get us into trouble without wisdom. True. And therefore, when we link arms, regardless of age Ooh. and regardless of all that stuff, when yeah. we can focus on Jesus and unite in Him, yeah. that's going to transform the world. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm like I. There is a place for obviously individualized ministry, 100 percent, because yeah. you can meet individual needs. But there needs to be corporate gathering where we can learn, and your fire sparks my fire and mm -hmm. my fire, and and it's just there's a synergy. Yeah. So go, be hungry. Yeah, yeah, and do it. Just do yeah. it. Like bless you. Like if you don't have moms and dads who are celebrating you, I didn't have a mom and a dad that celebrated. I bless you. Yeah. In Jesus' name, Amen. To have as much as Him yeah. and to seek Him with your whole heart. That's awesome. That's awesome. And it, once again, not to plug too much, but we do call it the In the Fire family. So it really is just a family that's coming together, and we have people from all over the world that join in, different ages, yeah, different yeah. times of life, and so it's it's so awesome to just connect. Because on Tuesdays we have the six thirty a.m. prayer time. And then later that day at 6 p.m., we have like a life group, like a fire group that yeah, we yeah, meet yeah. together. We'll Right now we're reading Acts. We'll pray together. We'll read together. And we'll just talk about what's going on in our faith. It's a beautiful time. You don't want to miss out. So definitely join that. I love it. But um, yeah, thank you so much for coming. It has been a blessing. And um, we'll see everybody for the next episode. Peace out.